Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.4.11, Modifying the Single Area OSPF Version 2. This Packet Tracer Assignment is part of the Enterprise Networking Security and Automation CCNA Version 7 Cisco Networking Academy curriculum. So in our lab here, we've already learned about uh, how to configure Single Area OSPF Version 2, which is using IP Version 4 addresses. Um, we've learned how to set a priority for the backup and designated router elections and seeing how it re-elects them in our previous lab, 2.3.11. Now we're looking at a few other fine tweaks with single area OSPF version 2 where we need to keep track of the hello and dead interval timers as well as um, the bandwidth. So right here, we've already got everything going. It says verify end to end connectivity. So basically, you just want to make sure each one of these PCs, if you go to a command prompt, can ping the web server. So if you go to ping 64.100.1.2, you hit enter and you want to verify that it can receive that data back. Again, the first one may time out, but the next three work, so that's good. Um, and you just want to make sure each PC can do that. I'll tell you it can so that you're verifying it works before we do some stuff to break something. Uh, all right, so we're going to go to R1 and look at interface 000. All right, so we're going to go to R1. And we're going to do enable config T interface 000. Hit enter and we're going to do IP OSPF hello interval and we're going to set it to 15 seconds. Then we are actually going to do the dead interval to 60 seconds. Okay, now that will affect the link between R1 and R2 because this one right here is S000. Now, why will that affect it? Well, the default, I believe, is 30 and 30, 30 seconds for the hello and 30 seconds for the dead interval. So basically, that's the time that it needs to keep up with the link. So remember, our hello and dead packets are being sent and received. And if you expire, the dead interval expires, then that means you're looked at like, hey, you're um, like the hello interval says like, hey, we're here. The dead interval gives you like that one last hurrah. And if that expires, then OSPF thinks that you're down. So to be able to keep that consistency, we'll always be on off timing between R1 and R2, even if both links are up. So it needs to be on the same timing at all times, because if not, you'll be checking at different intervals than I will, and we may miss each other in that window, if that makes sense. So we need to make sure that they are the same. So right now, you'll notice it says my neighbor is down, which is R2, because I don't know you know, this this timing is not right. And same thing here, you see the neighbor is down because again, it's missing each other with that window, okay? So, um, and again, it shows you here that it should do that. All right, so to get those timers back right, you'll notice in our directions here, it asks you to change the timers um, to the same as they are on R1. So we need to go to R2 and our hello interval was 15 and our dead interval was 60. So enable config T and this interface is S000 as well. Basically, it's just the other end of that link and it wants us to do uh, again, hello interval 15, dead interval 60. So IP OSPF hello interval 15. IP OSPF hello sorry dead interval 60 all right so yep hello interval dead interval 60 now and I'm gonna fast forward it we should see voila there we go you see that it learned about my neighbor again so let's go to R1 just to make sure it learned about my neighbor again. So again, you see that the hello and dead interval timers have to match on both ends or it will not work, okay? Now, we're gonna go on and we're going to adjust the bandwidth on R1. Remember, OSPF uses SPF, shortest path first, all right? What it does, is it looks at the whole topology and it calculates what it thinks is the lowest cost 
right? It assigns a number to each one and it adds them all together. The cumulative cost from one end to the other is where it will um, make the best path. Because if you notice here in our topology, if we go from PC1 to web server, we could go from R1 to R2 to the web server. We could go from R1 to R3 to R2 to the web server. I know that sometimes it may seem like, why would you go an extra hop from PC1 to R1 to R3 to R2 to the web server? Well, you got to think about the cost. So if it assigns each one of those hops as a lower number, usually the lower the number, meaning the faster or better the link is, sometimes it may, and I'm just going to write out a scenario here. All right, so for the purposes of this lab, I've set aside both paths that it could choose to go from the PC to the web server, from here to over there. Now, if from PC1 to R1, R1 to R2, R2 to the internet, and then to the web server costs more than it does to hop all of these different places, then it's going to choose whatever, whichever one has the lowest cost. So let's say right here, all right, between R2, R, sorry, R1 and R2, it gave it a eight, okay? Then to go from R2 to the internet, it gave it a four, all right? That means that it would give this path a total of 12 for the cost, okay? So not bad, all right? Now, this one, what if between R1 and R3, it was a really fast link, so it gave it a 1. Okay, so this one's a little bit slower than this one is. So R1 to R3 is a 1. Then R3 to R2 is also a 1. All right, then R2 to the internet should be the same as this one up here, right, is a 4. Now, that total cost is a 6. Okay, so with that, all right, even though from PC1 to R1 to R3 to R2 to the internet to the web server is more hops, it looks at it as a better route because of the total cost is less. Now, again, I just made all those numbers up. The Dijkstra algorithm takes care of that for us and calculating that path. But again, I just wanted to show that um, as we kind of talk about shortest path first. All right, so I'm gonna erase this because again, that is not actual real numbers, but it just shows you those two options and which one it'll put as the preferred route in the routing table because we do have more than one way to get from PC1 to the web server, okay? So um, again, we're gonna do a tracer uh, after, yeah, before um, we change this, we're gonna do a tracer from PC1 to get to the web server, all right, which is 64.100.1.2. So we're gonna do command line and we're gonna do tracert. Our IP address is 64.100.1.2. Yes. All right, so let's see. This shows you what IP addresses it used to go along the way. So if we look at our routing table up here at the top, that'll help us. So it says that it went from uh, it went to 172.16.1.1. That means it left the G00 interface. So that's where it went to first. Then it went to 172.16.3.2. That is R2. So it followed R2. Then it went to 209, which is the one that's connected to the internet, I believe. And then it went to the web server finally. So basically right now it's going from PC1 to R1 to R2 to the internet to the web server. That's the preferred route. Now, if we go in here and it wants us to manually set the bandwidth on S000 on R1 that's connected to R2, we're going to set that to 64. So this link right here. So we're going to go to enable config T interface S000 and we are going to do bandwidth 64. All right, now I'm going to fast forward this a little bit so it can make a change. And now we're going to redo that tracer command from PC1 and see does it change now that this bandwidth change? It doesn't actually change the bandwidth on the link, it actually changes the advertised bandwidth to the um, OSPF protocol. So if we hit up, we'll go back. Now we look and let's see if it took somewhere different. I believe it did. You can already see here there's more hops. We did five instead of four and it looks like we have a new address in here. So 
let's see here. Let's compare it to our routing table. Looks like we went to 172.16. Here, let me drag this over. I'm zoomed in so far. So it looks like we went to 192.168.10.6. That is R3. So we now went this direction, R1 to R3 to R2 to the internet to the web server. So you see how just advertising that at a much lower bandwidth, the routing tables look like, oh, that's not a preferred route anymore. Even though this is one more hop, we're going to go this way because it will still get there faster. Think about it in terms of sometimes you can set your, your GPS to shortest distance versus quickest path, right, or quickest distance. So sometimes even though something is shorter, there may be a lot of stoplights. There may be a decrease in... Um, uh, speed where you can go a little bit further at 70 or 80 miles an hour on the highway and actually um, get there faster. All right. Now, that's not an advertisement to speed. Just again, uh, you get the analogy, though. Right. So we can see the difference between those two traces. Now, that gives us 100 percent complete on our lab. You can also see the different paths that it enters as the preferred path using OSPF. And it's always changing as uh, links get bogged down. There's more congestion or if links go down completely, as we saw in our previous lab, or if the bandwidth, the advertised bandwidth actually changes.